physics predicts that there is no absolute motion in space. Inflationary theories tell us that when moving away from each other with increasing speeds, the galaxies would not abandon their physical positions in space. What would stretch would be the space that houses them. Thus, if absolute motion did not exist in space, the relative motion we observe between galaxies, and even between the Sun and its planets, would have to depend on time. It is that time and space, according to the theory of relativity, would form a continuous and elastic whole. As we cannot directly measure the expansion or contraction of space, the absence of this geometric change would compromise the accuracy of the Doppler effect. Furthermore, space would be outside the process of evaluating relative motion. Even if we know that space is curved, it would remain flat, for all intents and purposes. Unfortunately, the light of the stars, and that reflected by planets, isn't effective for assessing this length space dilation. The condition that the movement between galaxies is only relative and continuous would make space a phantom entity. That is, you know that space exists, but we have no way of demonstrating its dilation or contraction directly. When you analyze the relative motion of a planet in time, you get an apparently circular orbit. This held humanity captive for many centuries. The circular movement was considered the manifestation of divine perfection. To the observer, it appears that the Earth revolves around the Sun, forming a perfect circle. However, if the planet approached the Sun, because of a contraction of space that cannot be recorded directly, you would be subtracting its curvature. Without the curvature of space, time would cease to exist. So, the planet's relative motion would have to be toward the Sun, not around it. We know that both the Sun and the Earth could not reach the center of gravity placed between them, as the center would correspond to the state of rest in space. This would violate the uncertainty principle. As the relative and continuous movement is dependent on time, this time would cause the Sun and the planet to rotate eternally around that center of mass. Everything seems to indicate that time would also be related to the observer's memory. This memory allows us to assume that the relative and continuous movement between galaxies would happen in time and not in space. Both our memory and relative movement between stars depend on time. Without time, there is no memory and vice versa. Observable movement is continuous, because outside of time there is no movement. It is also relative, because the galaxies would not abandon their physical positions in space, while moving away from or approaching each other. As has already been said, it is space, itself, that stretches or contracts, without us being able to measure these geometric changes, directly. When we think about the movement of a planet around the Sun, we are basically saying that time would be the third dimension of space. If it couldn't count on time, space would fall into its resting position, becoming flat. In that case, there could be no forces acting, and the universe would become static. Science predicts that this state of rest of space would only exist at a point placed at infinity, and, therefore, inaccessible. If you compared the behavior of space with that of a spring, a behavior often adopted by physicists, this spring would be at rest at infinity. The concept of the Sun's future light cone allows us to realize that time should be the third dimension of space, not the fourth. Normally, the third dimension is considered to be depth. The time would be the fourth. However, in the Sun's future light cone model, adopted by Stephen Hawking, in his book A Brief History of Time, time is prior to our notion of depth. 
that is, if it weren't for time, there would be no depth of space within the sun's future light cone. The cone would flatten into the original two dimensions of space, which are width and length. Demonstrating a highly developed intuition, Johannes Kepler concluded that planetary orbits had to be elliptical, not circular. So, just as you couldn't directly describe the elasticity of space, you couldn't directly describe the elliptical orbit, either. The ellipse would be the result of the superimposition of the independent positions that the same planet should occupy over time. Science was forced to use light, representing all forms of radiation, as the only tool available to describe space. However, tracking processes that use light are indirect. That is, they do not evaluate illuminated events in real time. It is something similar to what happens when you raise your head to the sky and observe the movement of the sun and the other stars from east to west. As in Kepler's time, light tells us that this movement would be circular and not elliptical. It is concluded that light does not allow us to directly describe the elasticity of space being restricted to the indirect measurement of time. As we have no other tool to measure changes in its geometry, space would have become a phantom entity. The dilation or contraction of space would be hidden between the lines and would be behind the elliptical orbits of the planets. The veiled elasticity of space would influence the passage of time without the extent of this influence being directly measurable. However, the observer and out with a memory would be the only one to feel these oscillations in the passage of time. For him, time, in certain stressful situations, seems to pass more slowly. Other times, faster. He concludes that this must be some kind of illusion as there's no instrument that can measure these temporal variations.